Hi, buddy. This is Mr. Fowley, and welcome to Podcast 10.3. We're going to talk about saturated, unsaturated, and supersaturated solutions. We're going to talk about solubility curves. We're going to talk about solubility's effect of temperature and pressure. We're going to talk about solutions, suspensions, and colloids, and how to make rock candy. So let's get started. I hope. So, saturation. Saturated is a word you know. The carpet was saturated with blood at the crime scene. If it's saturated, can the rug hold any more? No. The word saturated means full. If it was unsaturated, could it hold more? Yes. Unsaturated means unfull. Saturated is holding as much solid as possible. Unsaturated has less than the maximum amount. Supersaturated means it's holding more than it should. And that's a trick to do. It's kind of hard to do all that junk. So how does it become supersaturated? Okay. Warmer water dissolves more solute. So the hotter it is, the more it will dissolve. So if hot water holds 100 grams and cold water holds 65 grams, what if I heat it, saturate it, put 100 grams in it, and cool it? Well, most of the time, 35 grams fall out but not all of the time. Sometimes it holds it and you get 100 grams in uh, cold water. Sometimes it will stay dissolved. Rock candy works like this. So what you do is you get yourself a little beaker. You put a little washer in here or let's say the uh, new LT lanyard for room C232. C232. And you have a super saturated solution on here and what happens is as soon as one crystal forms then it has a spot to grow on. So then more crystals form on it and more crystals form on it. And then you end up with a covered lanyard of rock candy. So, so it slowly precipitates out. How to test for the type of solution. So type of solution, remember, are saturated, unsaturated, and supersaturated. So you drop in a crystal. I wonder what it is. I drop in a crystal. If it sinks, and then I have a crystal here, it's saturated. It held all that it could. When I dropped it in, it didn't dissolve. That's almost impossible to do. It's really hard to do. If I drop in that crystal, and it dissolves, it's unsaturated. It could dissolve more, and thus it did. If it was super saturated, drop in a crystal, what happens is you get a whole bunch, a mountain of crystals that come out. Okay, So all of the extra precipitate comes out. It was super saturated. By the way, now it is saturated. Um, what people say, um, I told you how to make a super saturated solution. People would say, heat a solution. This is wrong. Heat a solution and saturate it. Cool it, drop crystal, and precipitate comes out. Now, why is this wrong? What you did right here is you just made a supersaturated solution. So be glad this isn't your doctor's method of checking for AIDS. Okay, let's see if you've got AIDS. Okay, here's the happy person. Uh, doc, uh,. I might have AIDS. I had a bad blood transfusion. Okay, first thing I'll do, inject you with AIDS. Plunger. Ouch, it hurts. Then I will do an HIV antibody test. And look, it's positive. Yep, you have AIDS. You don't, don't make it saturated and then test it. All you do is just drop a crystal on it and see if extra stuff comes in. So using tables, we should be able to figure out these things. If 10 grams of potassium chlorate dissolve at 29 degrees Celsius, is the solution saturated, unsaturated, supersaturated? So temperature is 29, and I'm looking for potassium chlorate. Potassium chlorate. So potassium chlorate holds about 10, right? So if it's on this line, see my potassium chlorate line? Whee! My potassium chlorate line, that means it's on the line because on the line. Get on the line, you're running sprints. If I put 100 grams of sodium nitrate, I'm going to change my color in here, just hoping it will be a different color to make life better. If I put 100 grams of sodium nitrate, sodium nitrate, 
100 grams, can't see that color, it's not dark enough, sorry. Ooh, that'll be a lovely, and we'll go, whatever that is. 100 grams of sodium nitrate and 100 grams of water. Again, notice it's 100 grams of water. Um, at 10 degrees Celsius, so 10 degrees, I got 100 grams. Do, 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 do. Now, all I did was put it in there. I put it in there. How much of it dissolves? 80 dissolve, because I didn't go through all the tricks, and 20 sit on the bottom. So if I have 20 sit on the bottom, it is saturated because it can't dissolve any more. Okay? Dink. Notice only one substance has a negative slope. That means it goes down. It's a gas. Gases have lower solubility in warm water. Okay, so that's do 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 know that. Would pressure affect gas solubility? Okay, so if I squeeze it, so if I have my little solution here, do 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 I have little bubbles. Like Diet Coke or champagne or something. If I squeeze this thing in here, because there would be some gas over it too. Can I squeeze more bubbles in there? Remember, pressure is basically squeezing a gas. Would it affect solubility? Yes. Increased pressure equals increased solubility of gas only. Would pressure affect solid solubility? No, because squeezing that top part, I don't have solid particles that are going to be in there. No, not squeezing that solute. Think. Solutions and solution like mixtures. So, solutions clearly are solutions. They have these small solute particles. A solution doesn't settle out over time. A solution doesn't show a beam of light. A suspension has the largest solute particles. They're huge! No, it'd be huge, but still. It's heterogeneous because the particles are so big. They do settle out over time and they often block light. So, if I have a solution, I shine a beam of light through it. There's no light on the other side. If it's a solution, even if it's a like purple Kool-Aid, and I shine a beam of light in it, I'll see the beam of light on the other side. Okay. Um, colloid has medium-sized solute particles. It doesn't settle out. It's Tyndall. It shows the Tyndall effect, which means the beam of light would be. Oh, let me just show you the next one. This, by the way, is still called heterogeneous. And the Tyndall effect is on the next slide. Look, see, see the beam of light? Whee! Um, Tyndall effect, you can see the beam of light through it. Fog. Yeah, well, I put fog. Fog shows the Tyndall effect. So why you should drive with low beams on the fog? Because the fog reflects the light. So if it reflects the light, that means you're blinded. Ah! So here you are driving in your little car with a lot of wheels or sweet rims, whatever. Shine your high beams on there. Ch -ch -ch -ch. If you have fog, it reflects the light. Ah, I'm blinded. Ah! And then your driver's ed teacher uses that emergency brake. There are different levels of saturation. Test the level by dropping into crystal. Whee! Super saturation isn't automatic. Gas is affected by pressure, but solids are not. You should know your particle size and tittle effect for solution, suspension, colloid, and you should know that we're all done. Toodles. Do do do.